What happened here? A people in their wandering, and they probably came from Central Asia or even Central Asia towards East Asia, in the area that we could call the Karakoram mountain range or Mongolia. They were in their wanderings, eventually wandered into this area, and certain things happened. We don't know exactly what the causes were, what the, what the uh, contributing factors were, but in 8,000 BC, that is 10,000 years ago, certain things coincided. One of them was either the discovery or the development, uh, some kind of perhaps uh, evolutionary development had taken place, and certain grains or grasses were discovered that are nutritional. I mean, of the grasses that exist, and there are thousands of species of grasses, we have those that we eat, and they are wheat and barley and oats and spelt, grains that are nutritional. These either developed at that time or they were discovered at that time. The other thing is that they came into this place which has remarkable resources. They are very fertile soil, very large amounts of fresh water, Tigris and Euphrates rivers, and sunshine most of the year. I mean, the, the amount of sunshine is very large, let's see, out of 365 days, there was something like close to 200 days of bright sunshine. Now these factors almost compel the rise of agriculture, but evidently the people realized that they had this grass, which was nutritional, and they had the fresh water and they had the fertile soil, and agriculture starts. Uh, again, we don't know exactly what happened and how. What we do know is 8,000 BC agriculture begins. This was the great revolution in human development. Until agriculture, we have hundreds of thousands of years of people wandering. Now they settle down because once you plant, then you have to stay there in order to reap your harvest. And so the agricultural revolution takes place 10,000 years ago in 8,000 BC, and it starts in this area. Once that is done, then something else emerges from that. If you farm, you can produce enough food for many, not just for yourself. I mean, you, you plant, whether you plant a thousand uh, grains of seed, under good conditions, it will produce uh, 100,000. So farming creates the possibility of creating your own food. You don't have to run and hunt. You don't have to go and simply pick fruit off trees. You now have the ability to create food. This also means that you create surplus food. Once you create surplus food, then you begin to relate to your fellow your fellows in a different way. And what happened as a result of agriculture was the creation of a specialized a society of specialists and interdependent people. What does that mean? If I can produce grain and it's too much for me and my family and I can also provide you, then you give me something else. And so specialization begins and that means that people now uh, can do other things than creating food. So, one is a farmer, the other one becomes the one who makes your house. And instead of houses being made of uh, bamboo reeds and so on, now they begin to be made, let us say, in carpenter style or architectural style. And then you have the producers of other products, you know, create leather and, uh, and whatever else you can imagine becomes the product of a society that has conquered the problem of creating food by agriculture, now you can create dozens of other products and people then exchange one product for another. A lot of things emerge out of this agricultural society, namely it's the rise of civilization on a higher level. Another thing that's interesting is that 
this area, in this area, there are no stones in the, in the earth. When you dig, you have soil, only soil, and it's fine soil. Because the soil there, the land, is the product of uh, alluvial deposit. That is, as the rivers flow, the rivers carry soil in suspension. When they hit the salt water, it falls. And so where the rivers flow out, a land builds up which is pure soil. And that you have at the uh, mouth of the Nile River, you have it at the mouth of the Mississippi. I mean, the Mississippi River is, the area there is also soil. You don't have rocks or stones there. It's not like this area, it's not like New England where you dig in the soil and you're immediately in the rocks. No, there is pure soil. Now this means that they, except for um, bamboo, and other such strong grasses, they didn't have substantial building material until they discovered, by chance, that uh, clay that's burned in the fire becomes stone-like. And there's a lot of clay there. So you have several uh, elements in, along these river banks in the southern part of um, the Mesopotamia and the head of the Persian Gulf. Of course, you know what is one of the biggest resources at the head of the Persian Gulf. Petroleum, <laughs> petroleum, petroleum. All of these places, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, they all push a pipe into the ground and the oil gushes out. Now that petroleum, before they began to dig for it, the petroleum is always seeping through the ground. It's always seeping through the soil. And as it comes out, it becomes oxidized and becomes tar, asphalt, that uh, thick black stuff. So you have there clay and you have bitumen, and then you have the other resources, the water and the soil and the uh, sunlight. <coughs> and they discovered that clay, uh, which would be used to surround a fire, let's say, to keep it from spreading, becomes hard like a rock. And then they realized they could take this clay, put it into forms of brick, and bake it. And lo and behold, they have building material, which resembles stone. And they used the pitch to stick them together. And sometime around 5000 BC or thereabouts, they begin to build cities of brick. And so you have the rise of solid structures. 